Yo, yo, this is Beach Mode Blocks. Congratulations on your brand new Fat Ripper. There's a few things you gotta do out of the box to get this bike rolling and going. We're gonna show you how right here. I do recommend having someone experienced help you build the bike, but if you take a little bit of time on your own, a little bit of tools, you can be building the bike in no time, shredding down the street. To build your Fat Ripper, you'll need items like cable and chain lubricant, grease, pliers, 15 millimeter wrench, cable cutters or scissors, and metric Allen wrenches from two to six millimeters. Your bike box may be sealed with glue, staples, or both. If yours came with staples, safely remove them with pliers and then throw the staples in the trash so they're out of your way. Remove the bike from the bike box. Ask a friend if you need some help. Don't forget to grab the seat and the separate parts box. Remove the packing material around the bike and use wire cutters or scissors to carefully cut any zip ties. The box your bike came in can be used as a bike stand to help during the build. Simply put the frame and rear wheel back inside of the box while keeping the forks on the outside. Now you're ready to get started. Remove the four bolts from the top of the stem using an Allen wrench. Also remove the pinch bolts on the side of the stem and add a small dab of grease to the threads on each bolt before reinstalling them. Grease is super important, so don't skip this step. Place the handlebars onto the stem while making sure that they're facing the correct direction and the brake cables are routed correctly in front of the bars. Make sure that the clamping area of the handlebar is centered in the stem evenly. Tighten the bolts on the top cap with an Allen wrench using a cross pattern to distribute pressure evenly. For the front to back angle of the handlebars, align them to the same angle as the forks. You can fine tune the angle later, but this is a good starting point. Now it's time for the seat and post. Take a small dab of grease and wipe it around the inside of the seat tube. Remove the bolt in the seat clamp using an Allen wrench. Apply grease to those threads and then loosely thread the bolt back into the clamp. Look at the side of the seat post for a line indicating its minimum insertion point. Be sure that the post is inserted into the frame to that level or further. Align the seat with the frame's top tube and then tighten the seat clamp using an Allen wrench. Take the bike out of the box and carefully set it on the floor. Adjust the angle of the seat and its position on the rails using an Allen wrench on the bolt underneath the seat. To attach the front wheel, loosen the axle nuts on each side of the wheel and prepare to slide the axle into the fork dropouts. Make sure that the front brake rotor is on the left side of the bike. Slide the axle into the fork dropouts. The safety washer should be on the outside of the fork so you can press their tabs into place. Tighten the axle nuts evenly on each side of the wheel using a 15 millimeter wrench while making sure that the front wheel stays centered within the forks. Make sure that the retention washer hook stays in the hole on the fork dropout when tightening the axle nut. Remove the spacer in the front brake caliper. It's important that you do not pull the front brake lever when the wheel is off and the spacer is removed. Carefully slide the caliper over the brake rotor. Add grease to the mounting bolts and lightly attach the caliper to the fork. Make sure you do not get grease on the brake rotor or the brake pads or you will contaminate them. Pull the front brake lever to center the caliper around the brake rotor. Keep the brake lever engaged while you tighten the mounting bolts or the brake will move out of alignment. Centering adjustments may be needed on the caliper mount as well. Open the box of parts and remove the pedals. You can identify the right and left pedal by the R and the L printed on the pedal cages. Add a dab of grease to the thread. Attach the pedals using your hand to turn the spindle towards the front of the bike. When you're sure that the threads are seated properly, use a 15 millimeter wrench to tighten each pedal. Adjust the seat to a comfortable height and check that the seat clamp is holding it securely in the frame. Straddle the bike and look down at the front wheel to see if it's in alignment with the handlebars. If needed, loosen the pinch bolts on the side of the stem and adjust the side to side angle of the handlebars, and then evenly tighten the pinch bolts once the angle is correct. If the headset feels too tight or too loose, loosen the pinch bolts on the side of the stem and then use the compression bolt on the top of the forks to add or release tension. When you find the correct tension, 
Tighten the pinch bolts to secure the stem. Be sure that your front wheel and handlebar stay in alignment during this process. Both tires will need air. Use a pump to inflate them using the PSI guide on the tire sidewall. Don't use higher or lower air pressure than what's printed on the tire because using too much or too little can damage your tire and rim. Check that the bolts in your cranks and sprocket are all tight, including the bolt connecting your sprocket to your crank arm. Applying grease to these bolts is also recommended. Adding a quality lubricant to the chain will help your bike run smoothly and cut down on unwanted noise. Wipe off excess lube using a dry rag. Be careful not to get any lubricant on your brake rotors. The chain tensioners on your rear wheel have been adjusted at the factory, but you can adjust them by loosening the rear axle nuts and then either tightening or loosening the tensioner with an Allen wrench. Use the lock nut to secure it in place. Be sure to tighten your axle nuts when you finish adjusting the chain tensioners and make sure the rear wheel stays centered in the frame and in the rear brake caliper. Cable clips are included to attach your front brake cable to the mounts on the forks. You can also use zip ties to secure them. Your front and rear brakes need to be bedded in. You cannot skip this step or your brakes will not work properly and they may make a lot of noise. To bed the brakes in, get your bike up to a medium speed and then apply the brakes evenly as you continue to pedal. Gradually slow down, but don't come to a full stop and do not try to skid. Just gradually slow down. You need to repeat the process 10 times each for the front brakes and the rear brakes. This allows the rotors and pads to mirror each other so they work smoothly. Grab the pad set and attach them to the top tube, stem, and handlebars. Slide the donuts onto each grip and double check that every nut and bolt is secure on the bike. For optimal performance, some riders take extra steps during assembly like tightening spokes and greasing bearings. We'll cover these steps in a future video. Now add the included safety items and go ride.